Today, I'm doing a split batch. One of the batches is gonna go into um, a one gallon jug with the yeast I captured from my wild lemon sour capture that I did. Two times now, I've tried to capture wild yeast. The first time was with lemon peels. The second time was with rose petals or dried rose petals. What I did is I took the lemon peel one and I grew it up into a half gallon batch. I let that sit for a month. No mold grew on it and it tastes okay. It's pretty tart. Um, it, it might be slightly solventy because I may let some oxygen get into it. But a palicle did grow, let me show you. Uh, I put it in my garage. It's been almost 100 degrees in Glendale, California for the last month. <laughs> it's, well, probably closer to low mid 90s, but in my garage, who knows? So, uh, yeah, it's been sitting there for a while. Uh, gonna take half of that, like I said, and fill it all the way to the top of this one gallon jug here. So no auction can get into there. Uh, and then I'll let that sit for about a eight months, six months, test it then, and take gravity reading and kind of see where I'm at. The other portion of this I'm going to take and do a quick sour with from a yeast strain called Lactobacillus hogardii. What I did before I used this strain is I made a starter. That, today's Saturday, I made a starter three days ago. Let's go back three days into that starter. All right, we're back in time here. I'm making a starter for my Lactobacillus strain. The strain I got was from the vault from White Labs, and they had this system, uh, which I still do, where they have these things that are unreleased, and you can put a, a, a order in, and when it gets to a certain amount, then you get it. And uh, I think it's like, now it's 150 orders, I think before it was 250, but I think they just started releasing all this stuff from the vault uh, anyway. So I think if you order, you might be able just to get it. I'm not 100% sure about that, because I ordered mine like three months ago, and it just came in like a week and a half ago. <laughs> so. I don't know if that was because it hit the order minimum or if they just released it. So this is the only time I've done it. The strain I'm using is Lactobacillus hilgardii. The number on it is uh, WLP678. So I have not had this. I don't even heard of anyone using this before. The only thing it says on the website is that it's good for Lambics, Ber Berliners, and Gooses. Which means it's probably better for a longer age sour than a quick sour, which I'm doing. I'm going to try to keep my starter probably around 85-ish degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then when I go to actually use it for my quick sour, I'm going to probably keep it around 95 to 100. It's really hot in my apartment right now. If I put it by heater, it's going to be at about 100 degrees. Uh, so that's without the AC on. So during the day, it'll be fine. And then at night, it might cool down like 85, 90 range. So, but it'll, it'll stay roughly in that, in that range. The starter I'm doing, it's a little tricky because... Uh, when I read about this on the Milk the Funk site, it said to do about a half liter starter up to two liter starter depending on the growth rate of the lacto you're using. I don't know what this is, I don't know what the growth rate is on this, so I'm going somewhere uh, for a one gallon batch on the high end. Um, so I'm doing a half liter starter because my pitch rate I think is, needs to be about 0.2 or 0.15 liters for my one gallon batch. I was really torn on whether to add uh, lactic acid to this to get, to get the pH to 4.5 first before pitching this, but that's usually done to try and kill off any wild bacteria that can get in. So if you're dealing with like yogurt, probiotics, um, grain to sour with, I think you would definitely do it then, and then maybe purge the headspace and purge everything with CO2. This is a commercial strain. I'm not gonna do it, because it's. I think it's pretty safe to, to, to pitch the commercial strain. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I couldn't see anywhere to lower the pH on a starter for lactobacillus or a pure strain lactobacillus. Uh, so yeah, um, let's uh, get the starter going. starter you can do when you pitch a pure strain of lactobacillus but it involves adding apple juice and uh, chalk and all this stuff and I just don't have the patience for that. I did it one time and it seemed to work okay. Uh, that I also have not done it that way with the starter for lactobacillus and been okay also. So um, I'll link that below in the description so you can see what that starter exactly is to so the, the funk site. 
Uh, but yeah, happy with this. Gonna put this next to the heater, like I said, and uh, in three days should be good to go. All right, let's go back fast forward in time. So half of that starter is going to go into this quick sour I'm doing. And the other half I want to save for something else. I'm not sure yet, but I want to save it. Because the description was for Lambics, Gooses, and Berliners. I'm assuming Berliners mean longer aged Berliners. Doing no hops for my quick sour at all, entirely, for the entire batch. And for the lemon one here, the lemon peel sour, I'm am doing a um, 15 minute steep of citra. Now, I'm gonna keep this around 200 degrees of a steep, and the main reason why I'm steeping is because I wanna pull off a gallon of the wort for that quick sour, and then I'm gonna steep it. I don't want any hops in my other sour. So the lemon one's gonna get the citra. And if I keep it at 200 degrees Fahrenheit or somewhere in that range, it's it should be fine. I'm, I'm, it's, I don't think the hops will fade too much. The IBU is going to be around 15 anyway. So it's very, 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 very minimal. After six months to a year, I probably won't even notice it anyway. I still want this to be pretty tart for the lemon peel one. So 15 IBUs is the max I want to get to it on. And um, I'm throwing a fair amount of flaked oats into this because uh, I want some body into it. The recipe is just two row flaked oats and acimal. And acimal is for my pH. I'm gonna mash a little warm, maybe 154 degrees Fahrenheit. I want a little bit of dextrins for the long age sour, but not too high because I still want my quick sour to do some work. So I had to find that middle ground there. I will link the recipe below or show the recipe below in my description as I always do. And you can look at that. And yeah, let's get this brew day started. is probably done. I didn't do an iodine test. I usually do to see if it's converted. Not doing it. I did not take a pH reading today. So uh, let's keep that train rolling and uh, let's not do a Vorloff either. Let's just let's just run off the warp that we have. So I think the lipids in this in the uh, you know the amino acids and all the stuff in the grain if anything might help the yeast later on. So I'm not worried about tannins. I'm not worried about any of that stuff. Just running it off right now. Who needs recirculation anyway? You probably should do it though. Ten forty nine. Perfect. Love it. Let's get the boil started. Started this brew day, five PM. So I matched in around five thirty. Trying to be done before dark. No Vorloff. Didn't heat the sparge water, which is about a half a gallon. And I'm only gonna boil for 15 minutes. There's 15 minutes deep in this. So we'll see if I make it. I think I can get there. I decided to not add my citra hops in the steep. I figure for the long sour, it's gonna take a year probably, realistically. I'm not gonna know those hops by then. There's no point. And I have 0.25 ounces of citra, so I might save it for my quick sour. And if the quick sour turns out good in the taste, I might try hop with it. I did it before with the sour and uh, it turned out great. So uh, I'm gonna save that, that citra instead for that. Game time decision. Been a weird brew deal around, breaking all sorts of rules. 10.54. My post well is supposed to be 1056. All good. I'm about to stop the chilling right now because I'm almost at 90 degrees Fahrenheit because I want to keep my quick sour at 90 degrees. I'm going to have to keep my other long sour with the lemon peels yeast for in the garage because I don't have any room in my chest freezer. So it's going to be 90 degrees here tomorrow anyway. Kind of unfortunate. It is what it is. So I'm going to call it right now. Yeah, right now. I'm gonna dump the top of this out. So I just want the bottom part. All right, I can gently swirl this here. I think I did something I've never done before. 
I did not sanitize this. <laughs> that is a first. I have not sanitized before after I fermented. Never before. Thankfully, it's a wild sour. So hopefully it'll enhance it. <laughs> At least it wasn't a nail or anything. So that should be a fun thing in a little while from now. I will sanitize this though. Okay, now that is sanitized. I'll go with that amount there. Have a little extra. I'm gonna try to fill to the top here. All right. So the reason why I fill this to the top here is to prevent oxygen from getting into the souring phase. You know, just to put a bunch of oxygen into this, uh, it's definitely going to be limited. I'm going to throw a little bit of CO2 in this also. Here's my starter. It smells all right. I'm trying to eyeball about half of it here. It's about 0.25 uh, liters of a starter. A little bit more than I probably do for a one gallon batch, but you can over pitch a little bit with lacto and you're okay. So I'm going to leave this be. I'm not going to aerate it at all. I might do a little swirl just to make sure it's in there. And I'm going to put this next to, to my heater and keep it at 100 degrees Fahrenheit or try to keep it at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. This one, like I said, I keep it in the garage. And uh, yeah, see this guy in a year and see, check this guy in about two to three days. I did it. I got done before dark.